for somebody who is, say, in their mid-60s and they're taking this in right now and they've been neglectful of resistance training and and say their muscle mass right now is is pretty pitiful and, and so is their bone density, mm-hmm. how much of a chance do they have at building that up at that age? Your body- Because you hear a lot about maintenance, especially when it comes to muscle mass. Like you got to- you got to build it up and then maintain it. Yeah. But I've heard specifically, again, to the muscle mass piece, a lot of grim information about people rebuilding that when they're older. Yeah. Your body never loses its ability to adapt. Now, the potential can be reduced as you get older. Like your your your, your ultimate strength potential is going to be lower at 75 than it would be at 25. Okay. But your body will always adapt. Uh, the second you lose the ability to adapt, you die. Because that's so the body has those mechanisms that are in place. So can you strengthen bone and muscle in those ages? Yes, absolutely, definitely to the point where you're healthy. You know, you may not become a, a a champion, you know, weightlifter. You may not be able to press your body weight overhead, but you could definitely get to a point where you're you're healthy and you feel good. So that that um, that is a a terrible message that people can receive or believe and it prevents them from doing the, the one thing that can so significantly positively impact their health. It's really, you know, it's really terrible. So no, I, the, I'll tell you what, the most profound changes that I've ever seen from a lifestyle perspective in clients were in people over the age of 65. Fact. Okay. You give me a 35 year old, and yeah, they become more fit, they become stronger, they feel better. And that's profound. I don't want to take anything away from that. But I take a 70-year-old who has trouble going up the stairs and in three months can now go up the stairs without holding onto the railing comfortably. That's profound. That's life-changing. You know, I, I, I've told this story many times. I had this one woman I trained who was in her late 70s and she hired me, or her I should say her daughter hired me to train her mom. And we would work out once a week together. And I don't remember how long this was. It was probably, I don't know, seven months, six, seven months or something down the line. We'd been training consistently once a week. And I remember she walked into my studio. I used to have this small, like one-on-one studio for trainers and coaches and all that. And she walked in one day and I was with another client and I thought I had made a mistake on the schedule. So I saw her and I said, oh my gosh, I said, you know, I don't think we have a session scheduled. And she said, no, no, no. She's like, "I, I just wanted to come in here and tell you I was next door grocery shopping and the, you know, I had the, the, the bagger load my car for me. And without thinking, I reached up, grabbed my trunk and pulled it down. She says, I haven't been able to do that in 10 years. I haven't been able to reach up far enough to grab my trunk and pull it down and close my trunk. I didn't even think about it. I grabbed it, pulled it down. And then I sat there and I couldn't believe that I was able to do that. And I just had to come and tell you. Like that's profound. That is a massive change in your lifestyle, you know, or or being able to get up and down off the couch. I mean, that's uh, that's incredible. So, yeah, no, you're you're going to see bigger lifestyle changes and improvements in advanced age than you would when you're younger. Now, your potential again may be lower, but I don't think a seven year old is exercising or going to start strength training right now with the intention of deadlifting, you know, twice their body weight. I think what they're doing is they're saying, I want to become healthier. I want to improve my longevity, my mobility. I want to feel a difference. And they will. They'll feel a significant difference. This right here is my favorite protein powder, the 100% grass-fed bone broth protein from Paleo Valley. It comes in three flavors, unflavored chocolate and vanilla. The chocolate and vanilla, you can just mix with water. They taste incredible just like that. And I like to take the unflavored, scoop it in my black coffee, mix it in, I barely taste it, but I'm getting that collagen and protein boost. These protein powders have been third-party tested for over 40 different herbicides and pesticides. They've come back negative. There's no chemicals or solvents used in the processing, just water. As a viewer of the show, click the link in the description to save 15% off this protein today. Again, this is my favorite protein. I know you're gonna love it. And another layer onto this, and we talked about this last time, is muscle memory. So for somebody who used to work out, say in their 20s and 30s, they're not actually starting from ground zero. The muscles remember that previous build that they've had and it can come back easier. Yeah, if you were to if you were to let's say 
train for an entire year and, and gain, let's say, 10 pounds of lean body mass, which would be significant in a year uh, period. Um, and then let's say for whatever reason you lost it all, you would gain it back if you went back to training within a month or two. So what took you a year, you would gain back in, let's say, one-tenth the time. Uh, that's that's called muscle memory. It's well-documented. Um, it's uh, If you've ever broken a limb, you've experienced it, where you, you had to take a cast off your leg or your arm, and you look at your arm, you're like, oh my God, it's so skinny, like there's no muscle. And then just through daily movement, your arm comes back to normal size in a very short period of time. So that's an adaptation evolutionary uh, process that we've had that we have. It's an ancient um, evolutionary, like I said, adaptation that we have, um, and it's remarkable. So, but I, also just of note, whatever you do to to get stronger, you need to do a fraction of what you did to keep it. It's pretty crazy. There's some studies that show that one ninth of the training uh, that you that it took to get to where you're at would be take would would be required to maintain. I mean, that just makes strength training so much more attractive, I think. It's like, okay, you know, once I get there, well, to keep it, it's so much easier. And I can miss workouts and, you know, I lose the activity, you know, get me wrong, there's benefits that you'll lose, but the muscle strength and muscle mass itself, it sticks around. That's encouraging. And for somebody tuning into this and say they are in that bracket of, you know, 60 plus years old, they haven't taken this stuff we're talking about seriously today, resistance training to this point, and they want to start today. How effective is just using body weight oh. and, and putting on the muscle and getting a lot of these benefits we've been talking about? Yeah, let me be very clear. Resistance training or strength training, all it is is a form of exercising using some form of resistance, which can be body weight. It could be a stretchy band. It could be, uh, of course, free weights or machines. All it is is using some type of resistance in a way to build strength and build muscle. That's it. So what does that look like? Okay, I, I mentioned the tools that you can use, body weight, resistance bands, uh, machines, free weights. What does that mean to use them in a way to build strength and muscle? Um, you do reps and you rest in between sets. Okay, so it's not going from one exercise to another nonstop and I'm sweating and breathing hard. That's endurance training. That's not what I'm talking about. It's lifting something or doing something for, let's say, 10 motions, 10 repetitions with a sufficient intensity. Uh, and that's based off of your current fitness level. So again, if you're doing nothing, it doesn't require much at all. If you're very advanced, then it requires much more. And then you rest about a minute and then you repeat it. Now, why do you need to rest? In order to build strength, we have to train the strength system known as the anaerobic energy system. And if I don't rest and I go from exercise to exercise to exercise, I train the, aer I train the aerobic system, which doesn't build much strength and muscle, just builds stamina and endurance. So I do a set, I sit down, I wait a minute, literally 60 seconds or two minutes or three minutes, and then I repeat it again. I got to train the strength system. That's it. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. And when it comes to basic movements, again, we're talking in the newbie here, somebody that's just beginning. Yeah. What is, say, a handful of different movements that they want to incorporate to work the whole body? Oh, God. You don't need to do very many. And there's variations of the ones I'm about to say, but it's very simple. You need to do some kind of a squatting movement, okay? There's a lot of variations, but a body weight squat would qualify. Some kind of a pressing movement, so a push-up or all the push-up push -up variations, including pushing up against the wall. If that, you know, That's a very regressed version if, I, if I'm just getting started or pressing something overhead, okay? Some kind of a pulling movement. So a row would be good. A pull down or a pull up would be good in more advanced um, you know, circles. And then something that involves rotation. Uh, so rotating with a band or rotating with a cable or a weight just to strengthen that kind of rotating movement. And then if you want to add something else, something that strengthens the core directly, a floor crunch would be just fine. That's it. I mean, you're, you're set right there. Now you could do a lot of variations, right? So I mentioned squats. So you could do a squat. You could do a, a lunge. You could do a walking lunge. You could do a step up. There's like a lot of different variations of that. You know, a row, a pull down, different types of rows for the pulling, pressing. There's lots. But that's it. Those basic things that I said, if you did something that kind of fell in each of those categories every day, you know, every time I should say you exercise, you'd be set. 
I think it's important we're getting into this on such a simple level for the beginner because yeah, it can be so intimidating. If somebody's tuning into the video and looking at your size right now and and there's so much information out there in the complex realm, which is necessary too for the people that are at that level. But I find, well, I know my audience, a lot of them are older and they're older males. Yeah. And they've probably never taken this on to a serious point. So I think it's important we're getting to the nuts and bolts here and giving them hope. Again, a lot of them maybe have heard that there's no sense in starting to exercise later in life. I can't really do much at that point. We're giving people hope and we're giving people the necessary info to get started. Yeah, it's um remember the right dose will get you there that will get you the best results. And if you're not doing anything now, it doesn't take much. So if you're watching this right now and you haven't done strength training in a while or let's say ever, you could literally do some body weight squats. If that's too challenging for you, if your form isn't great, you feel it in your knees, you could just sit down and stand back up. That would be a squat. And do it in a way to where it doesn't hurt any joints. So slowly sit down, slowly stand up. If you need to raise the height of the chair because sitting down it, you know, in a deep chair might be too difficult. That's fine. You could start, you could start there. So there's one movement you could do where you stand up against the wall, move your feet away against it, uh, uh, away from the wall, push your body, uh, let your body go to the wall, push your body away. There's your, there's your pressing movement. And then for your pulling movement, get yourself a, a stretchy resistance band, tie it around a doorknob, stand up or sit down, pull it back, pull the shoulders back. So you feel the, the upper mid back kind of pulling back to give you that kind of good posture or you're training the back area. There's three exercises, you're done. Like that's your workout, right? You could do like one to three sets of each of those, stop right there in a few days, try it again. As you get stronger, add a little bit more reps or intensity. And that's a great place to start. That'll, for the first two or three months, get you some good strength gains. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. The default is going to be, you're going to be obese. You're probably going to develop diabetes and you're not going to feel very good. And that's just, that's just the way it is. And you have to step outside of that in order to change things. Muscle is so protective. In fact, that is.